Lord, we thank you for your presence in this house today. Lord, we come today to worship the name of God, for you are the true and living God. Lord, you are the one that makes a way for us when there's no way. And Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for all that you do in our lives each and every day. Lord, we ask that you bless the message for today, Heavenly Father. Lord, that it will resonate in our hearts and our spirit, Heavenly Father. Lord, that there will be a change today in our lives. A change taking us to new heights, new levels, new understanding in you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that each and every person that is listening today, each and every person that is making their way to the house today, Lord, that they have prepared their hearts and minds for something new, something new, something new today. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Oh, Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you in a way that we haven't thanked you before, Lord. Lord, for you make every day new. If we take that time to see the things that you're doing in our lives, Lord, you can make every day new, Lord. So we thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We pray.
welcome into this place, Father. Welcome into this broken vessel that is me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, for removing all the brokenness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord. Sing it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Hey. 
said, don't quench your worship this morning. Don't quench your worship this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's prepare our hearts to receive the word. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just stand on your feet. Just give God a call. Himself 
uh, if you will, before God in a sense, if you say it like this, he found himself in a place that was distressing. If anybody knows about being in distress, that's when you send out a signal called SOS. That's when I holler help. That's when I'm in a position or a place whereby I can't do it alone. David found himself in a position or place whereby he felt and believed he couldn't do it by himself. He was crying, and in the midst of his tears, uh, David was so disturbed and distraught. Anybody been like that? Yes. Oh, come on now. Oh, yeah. And, and in that place, we find in the Bible that uh, the people that were around him, instead of encouraging him, because they themselves were feeling as David was, they began to get upset, upset with David. He's experiencing what they experienced. Come on, somebody. You ever been in a place where everybody's going through the same thing, but then you start looking and you're mad because you feel like it's their fault? Wouldn't have happened if they hadn't done certain things. Come on, somebody. In it, uh, if I can say this to you, what we found with David, David came to a place, the Bible says, he encouraged himself in the All Lord. Right. What, 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 what does that really entail? What does that really look like? What does that really mean? We have to understand what was happening for David is that David came to that place, the Bible says in another way, or another translation says that he strengthened himself in the Lord. Basically, let's say it like this. It is in those places and times, or sometimes you define it as though be like you feel like you're by yourself. Anybody been there? Amen. Feel like I'm walking by myself, nobody's there but me. But it's in those times that God's going to define for you that you're not by yourself, Amen. that you're not alone. It is in those places and in those times that God will allow you to experience an intangible sense of the presence of God. Whereby you'll find yourself, or if you will, you come to a place, a bishop, where you find yourself posturing yourself before the Lord. Where you lay out before God and you recognize that He is my help. He is my strength. He is my fortress. He is my salvation. It is in those places when we're strengthened in God in spite of it, the situation may still look and be the same. But it's in those places where we look and we recognize that we're not alone. It is also the places where God in, inevitably causes us to recognize that he's our strength. Yes. Amen. Help me, Holy Amen. Ghost. Amen. We like to say David encouraged himself in the Lord. But it, the, the truth of the matter is David was strengthened in that place with God. Come on, somebody. Amen. And sometimes what happens with the Word of God, go ahead, take your seats. Sometimes what happens with the Word of God is that we hear it, but it comes across to us as though it's vague, as though the instructions have somehow we didn't make sense. It's kind of like this. I, I, I want to tell you this morning, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm excited. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. I'm just excited. Come on, anybody? Yeah. Been, you know what it's like to be excited? Being excited is kind of like, as you know, it, it, it may be bad on one hand, but for a kid, you know, it's one of the few times that uh, uh, October 31st, as a kid, I'll let you be honest, as a kid, you get excited with the, as it gets closer to dark because you know you're getting ready to go out and get you some candy. Forget about all the other things that's attached to it. The only thing you think of is the candy. It's kind of like Christmas. Come on, anybody. You remember back when you was a kid when you thought, well, we never really thought about Santa Claus. There was too many in the house that wouldn't let you have that kind of fable going through. We didn't get a chance to believe in the Easter Bunny or, or, or believe in the sense of a tooth fairy because we already knew somebody was coming to put it under our pillow. We knew it wasn't no Santa Claus. I'm sorry. We had too many in the house. They wouldn't go let you even get that, that far. They would tell them, don't, don't tell them, don't tell them. No, no, no. I didn't get it. They're not getting it. <laughs> Listen. So, so we didn't have the sense of being able to hold on to those things. But what I'm saying this morning is you recognize there was an excitement and anticipation when Christmas time came. Glory to God. Anybody ever tried to unwrap a, pit, a gift? You know, just kind of just tear a piece. Just everybody here probably done shook it up. Just to see what the sound was like. Anybody? Oh, I can tell you what that is. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't see in the box. I can't see what's happening. But I feel 
in the spirit. And I hate to use that word of feeling, but there's a sense of knowing in the spirit that God is moving us whether you want to move or not. Amen. In my spirit, there's a sense of knowing that God is saying, I'm thrusting you into new places. And it looks like, on the surface, Brother Dante, Minister Dante, it looks like on the surface that nothing is happening. It looks like on the surface that everything's the same. But spiritually, I have a sense of knowing that God is doing something. Yeah. Yes, amen. Let me just say to you in this fashion, because I'm getting ready to get, get into it and get on and get out, and, as they say. But I was listening, I said something just a moment ago, and I was listening just the other day. I love the sense of people sometimes, they say, oh, well, that's another message. You listened to this or you saw this. That's the message you're going to talk about. I'm not trying to talk about folks. I just listen, and they give you material that goes with the word. I was listening to my grandchildren the other day. Medicine Dante. And, and Sydney. And little Dante were talking. She was giving him instructions. He was telling her, I've already cleaned it up. And she said, no. She was letting him know what he did wasn't going to pass. It wasn't good enough. And they, they were going at it. And Dante says, he finally got enough of it. He says, he calls him upstairs and he speaks to little Dante and he tells him, listen, basically listen to your sister. He says, dad, her instructions are vague. <laughs> I got tickled because I realized sometimes in the word for us, we're looking at the word and we believe what God said, that his instructions are vague. We don't fully understand and thereby because, because we don't fully understand, it's like how can I move forward? How can I do what you're saying if I don't understand it? It's vague to me. But I found out God's word is not vague, but the way we interpret it, sometimes the way we share it, the one, sometimes the way we speak for it, we're missing the word of God because we present it as vague. And so therefore we walk in a place. I don't understand the instructions. How can I fulfill what's being said if I don't understand it? Whew. So I'm looking at some things. And I want to tell you today, listen, God is good. Somebody say good all the time. The thing that's happening for us right now, most of you may not know it. You may not understand it, but the enemy has been trying to disturb you. He's been trying to distract you. He's been trying to disrupt your life. Trying to keep you, Sister Dolores, from the place that God has called you to. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Because I'm telling you, the Spirit of God says, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move my people. <laughs> Tell somebody, I don't want to stay in the same place that God's trying to move me. <sighs> it's the things that God has been speaking. At the same time, there's things, what's happening is God has taken me back. You ever have to go back to go forward? I, 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 I get so tickled with sometimes uh, things people will tell me. You know, I'm just going to be real. Uh, someone told me the other day that someone was going to see a concert. They was going to see new kids on the block. <laughs> I got tickled. Bishop, I got tickled because new kids on the block. Shoot, that's old man on the stoop now. <laughs> oh, God. It, 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 it's stuff. Come on, you just got to be real. That's just my mind works. I start to listen, and I say, you know what? I don't know, but sometimes we go have to go backwards to go forward. I'm making sense to you. Sometimes I have to go back, relook, you know, look at something again, hear it again, get the sense of understanding in order to go forward. And I want to tell you, I hear the Spirit of the Lord. It's like God was saying to me. You know, I want you to see some things. I want you to take hold of some things. I want you to know that I'm taking you somewhere. Well, well wait a minute. Tell somebody that sounds vague. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how to do it. But then I'm reminded. I'm reminded because God was showing me there was a point in time when there were some things he wanted to happen in my life. 
where he just put something in my spirit. Mr. Stanley, there was times where the Spirit of the Lord just set something on the inside. I can't explain it to anybody. Ain't no point in me sharing it because you're not going to get it. I just know I have to do this. I walked into places when the Spirit of God was giving me just a sense of knowing I'm supposed to do it. And I walked in places literally where they told me to walk away. You're going to have to go uh, because what you're looking for, what you're asking for, you don't qualify for it. And so after spending time with those people, I might leave, but I'd let them know before I leave, I will be back. Not, not like the Terminator, but I know I'm going, I'll be back. I knew I was coming back because what was in my spirit was something God put there. And that's where I'm at right now. There's some folks that's going to be looking at us real soon, saying, how did you get there? How did you acquire? How did you do what you're doing? How did it happen? All you're going to be able to tell them, it is not me, it's God. Amen. 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 And so sometimes, listen, it looks hard, it looks difficult in one sense. Mother, it looks like everything around us, you know, when we, when we need about 20 people with us, but we only got two. Help me, Holy Ghost. And the two you got is shaky. One, 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 you don't know if they can really stand up on their own. They got a lot of mouth. Glory to God. But you don't know if they even got strength. Come on, right house. Sometimes when you look at what you got, you still feel like you're alone. But I'm going to tell you, God has, I say, like he did with Gideon, he may have reduced the numbers ultimately so that he can get the glory. I must be in the wrong house. So I want to get you somewhere. I want to talk to you for a moment. And so I'm telling you, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, God is thrusting us into a place. Now, if you don't understand what it means to be thrust, that in itself going to mess you up. But, but the thrust is where, tell somebody, it's like being pushed, but you're getting another push. You are already being pushed, but you're getting ready to be, really be pushed. You, you ever been standing at poolside? Poolside? Anybody ever stand at poolside? Now, you know, if you can't swim... Come on, if you can't swim, that's not my issue now. If you can't swim, you 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 kind of like very cautious. And I, I, what I hate, Sister D, is people that can't swim that want to push people in. You ever see that? Folks that can't swim want to push people in, but oh, they'll fight like, even if you're trying to put them in the, in the shadow in, they, they will fight. Like you, you trying to kill them, and all you trying to do is introduce them to the water. Know what I'm talking about? I want to tell you, you get ready to be thrust, like you're standing at that place. You really don't. You you thinking about getting in? Come on, somebody. You know how we test the waters before we. Yes. You got to be sure, and, 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 and you know, even if you can swim, you, you don't like to just jump right in. You want to test that big toe. If anybody got that? Okay. Put that toe in. I don't know why we're going to go this with the little toe, but we take the big toe and put the big, yeah, test the water. Yeah. Then you start a little further. Get the whole foot in. Sometimes you pull it out. Oh, that's cold. Yeah. You ever that? Yes. Woo. And if you on the end is trying to coast them in, come on, come on, come on, come on, get it, come on. God's got, God's got he, he been waiting on us. We've been saying, God, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. You get ready to be thrust. You know what's like being thrust in? That's where someone finally gets tired of waiting on you, and they just push you in. Now you all wet, you all in. Tell somebody I'm getting ready to go all in. Woo! Didn't know it, but I'm going all in. So one of the things I want to say to us today. Is I want to get us ready. Glory to God. I want to get us ready. Because the Spirit of God says, you're going. So Shane, you know what? Can I tell you this? If some people feel like, well, I'm not ready. You ever feel like that? I'm not ready. Of course, I, I need a little bit more work. Well, God's ready for you to go. Even though you don't feel like you're ready to go. And so, it's some places that we're going. It's some people that are going. 
Even when they feel like they're not ready. You ever just grab somebody's hand and pull them in? Since we're talking about the pool, you ever pull somebody in? You know you're going, but you're going in with me. The Spirit of God is pulling us, literally bringing us to this point that we're getting ready to go into some places. Don't tell you whether we like it or not. Some of it, some of it, Lord, tell you something. People get ready to see us in a whole other venture. Get ready to see us in a whole other place. Tell somebody they're going to hear your voice. Yes. Come on now, they're going to they hear your voice. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have something to say. And I'm going to have something to say. Because God's about to give you something. Because God is about to give you something. Let's go to Psalms 37. Psalms 37. I'm, I'm trying to hurry. I'm gonna, uh, 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 you're excited yet? Anybody excited yet? Yes. Yes. Amen. Jesus. Amen. You know, um, it's some things, I'm going to tell you, as God's been putting it in my spirit, he's been showing me some things, and I, I literally, <laughs> I've literally been saying, God, is that you? Right. God, God, is that you? Right. Right. And you say, well, why would you say that? Because God doesn't show me, you know, come on, come on, somebody. God not showing me uh, candy bars. That all I got to do is put it by my, my, my little money in the candy bar machine, the vending machine, and pull it out. He, he's showing me things that there's, number one, I can't attain it of my own merit. Mm -hmm. It didn't make a difference how much substance I have. I seemingly don't have enough. But God's showing me things that are over and above me where I know that I have to depend on him. and say, God, th is this you? Come on, anybody want to know about Yeah. Yes. yes. Anybody? Yes. You can't have this because you don't qualify. You can't have this because you don't have enough. Come on, somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to. But the Father is saying, everything you need, everything you desire is in me. Amen. I know that sounds vague. It sounds vague. That sounds vague because it's a personal, it's a personal issue. It's not about things. This whole thing. It's not about stuff. It's about what God wants to put inside of us. It's how he wants to use us. Tell somebody you won't go next door right now to talk to your neighbor. So you're certainly not going overseas to minister to people. You got three people in the house that you won't even talk to and share the word of God. How are you going to get to the neighbor's house? Come on, somebody. So the Holy Spirit's got to thrust us in the places, thrust us into things because we don't believe it. Come on, can I talk to you? Can I be real? One of the things that happens, can I say this about your finances just for a moment? I'm getting ready to get to the scripture. But can I say this about your finances right now? We're afraid to give. We believe God. For, we believe in, come on, Mother. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't, can't talk about money. Mm -hmm. See, we believe God for stuff. But if God's asking us for something, we don't want to do that part. <clears throat> we don't want to give. Until we get. Come on somebody. Somebody say amen. amen. We're afraid because what I got right now. If I give this. I have nothing. Right house? Right house. And the father's saying I'm bringing you to a place. Where I'm going to get ready to thrust you out. It's kind of like that widow woman. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. It's kind of like the widow woman. Because what's getting ready to happen. is get, You know the widow woman was saying this. She literally says. Hey, I'm about to make a cake for me and my son, and I'm going to die. But God is saying, before you do that, give to me. Before you do that, give me what you got. Come on, somebody. Right. How I'll give you what I got. I'm afraid I want something, but that part where you're asking me to give, I ain't ready for that. Just mm -hmm. somebody, God's going to cause you to step out in a way and in a place. He's getting ready to thrust you into a place spiritually to bring a whole host of things forward. Amen. And so what I want you to do is when you look at the word in Psalms 37 and, and let's go over to verse 42. Psalms 37, 42. Wait, did I get the right one? Help me holding those. Excuse me, it's 37, 4. Glory to God. See how you do? What the 37 and 4? 37 and 4. There's no 42. It's just 40. Somebody looking at me saying, that was a test. You didn't pass. <laughs> 37 and 4. Okay. And, and, and it asks somebody, does this look familiar to you? Yes. Amen. 
He said, delight thyself also in the Lord. Remember, we like this part. We, we, you know, this, this is good, huh? Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, now usually what we all only do is we like to just tell folks, just God's going to give you the desires of your heart. Right? Come on, somebody. We love the fact that God is going to give me the desires of my heart. Part of the reason that the scripture is written, part of the things that you're seeing here is that you've got to understand some things that's already happened. Some of the things that's happening, as he began in 37 and 1, he said, fret not yourself because of what? Evil He said, because they're going to what? They're going to soon be cut off. Can I tell you one of the things that's happening to us as the enemy is trying to derail you? The enemy's trying to get you in a place that you'll give up before you ever get started. The enemy's trying to stop you from ever reaching your destination. The reason he's trying to do that is trying to get you to forfeit what God has for you. The enemy's trying to put you in a position. Listen, listen to me. I'm not just making this up. You got to understand by the time you get to verse 4, the reason why God is saying delight yourself Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll do something. Now listen, the instructions for us in most cases are vague. The instructions in most cases, they don't make sense. And the reason they don't make sense is that we like to look at the part. Someone say, I like the part where I get what I want. <laughs> but the reason why it's vague, why we're not getting what we want, is because he said delight. And we don't know how to delight, but we don't understand why he was even telling them delight. The reason he was even telling them to delight, and I'm going to break it down so you understand what it means to even delight yourself. But before we can get there, we got to understand that we have an enemy. Can I tell you we have a natural enemy in the devil who is opposing you and me from seeing what God has for us. We have a natural enemy that does not want any of us to make it to the place where God called us to. Okay. We have a natural enemy that's going to do whatever it takes to stop us. Now what's interesting about this is that he's recognized and or studied each of us to understand that each of us, it requires different things to stop us. Come on, somebody. Some of us naturally have it in us that if we fall, we're going to get back up. Some of us, when we fall, come on, somebody. Amen. We fall, we tumble. That scrape, we get, we wipe ourselves up, we just keep on moving. Some people, because they fall, they suddenly see themselves as though there's no way I can catch up. So they finish. Mm -hmm. The enemy recognizes what it's going to take for each of us. Sometimes he don't need to make you fall. Just put an obstacle in your way. Now listen, listen, you got to understand this. So what he does, some of us have been obstructed by circumstances in our relationships. In our relationships, the instructions have caused us to be so in the place, how do you say, engorged in our own feelings and emotions that we can't even really even hear God anymore. I'm so moved by the place that I'm at because of my emotional attachments. Can't do anything else. Come on, somebody. Amen. Tell somebody the enemy has successfully stopped some of us because of our relationships. You see, you think of terms of relationship, you think of man and woman, you think in terms of just being in that place, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend. Come on, can I be real with y'all? You know, most of you have had your first love, probably have had, you know, two or three loves. Come on, been in love with a number of different people. Come on, anybody? Help me hold a ghost. Whew. Probably the first person that you fell in love with. You now you looking at them and saying, I don't know how I ever. Jesus. <laughs> I don't know what I've ever seen. Lord of God. Well, I want to tell you, my first love, I'm still in love with him because he's right here. Glory to God. Maybe it's just, just I'm not about the world. I looked at me and I fell in love with me. <laughs> you know, it's those places. We've all been through where in relationships we may have gone through a place where the relationship hurt us.
to the place where it stunted us, where we felt like I'll never mature or grow from this again. Come on, somebody. Relationships. In relationships, sometimes you say, you know what? I talked to a guy one day, and because of the relationship it soured, he said, I'll never get married again. And the Lord told me to tell him, uh, son, you're going to get married again. Don't want to hear that. Well, when he got married, <laughs> listen, in relationships, the enemy has tried to, to shut you down. Some of you right now in the midst of relationships, the enemy's using that to distract you. To cause you to be pulled aside. To cause you to be pulled away. Causing you to see something other than God. I'm not calling them evildoers. But don't fret yourself because of evildoers. Don't, don't get caught up in those things. He don't want, want you to stop right there. He don't want you looking at that stuff. Can I tell you, in relationship, sometimes people disappoint you. Come on, somebody. Woo. Sometimes you're anticipating for something to do, someone to do one thing and they do another, and because they've done it, it causes the sense of the relationship to sour. Sometimes that's our children. Whew. I'm sure at some point we may have been disappointing to our parents. Sometimes there were places, sometimes it's not just the, the, the sense of the parent being disappointed in the child, but sometimes the child is disappointed in the parent. And it sours relationships. But the enemy has meant those things to distract us and disturb us yeah. and to take us off course. Yeah. Yeah. It was meant to cause strife, bitterness, mm -hmm. anger, and else. Yeah. <sighs> See, you don't know what it is. See, the enemy studies you. So what can I do? Some people, I just got to put a hurdle on them. They run in the race, but they don't know it. If I just stick this out, this is enough to just to get them off course. Amen. I don't want them to fall. I don't want them to fall, but I just don't want them to get their full potential. I don't want them to do the thing that they're doing. Let me get on. Let me get on. So we're all going through some places mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. The many enemy has gone forth to challenge us to disturb us, to move us away from what God is calling us to. Come on, somebody. Amen. And it'll do whatever it takes. Come on, somebody. Whatever you're called to do, the enemy's going to try to use that. Try to use something to make you feel like that came to you. Come on, anybody, the Lord has been speaking to you about your finances and he told you that you were going to be wealthy or, or you were going to prosper and you can't even get a dime together. Amen. Come on, somebody. It, it, it just seems like everything's difficult. They say, hey, listen, all you need is, is $100 and you, you can get all these different things. You know, and Minister Dante, when, when, when the Lord had told you you're going to be prosperous and wealthy and you can't even get $100. Let alone 50, can I get five? You know, and so we see these places that the enemy's taking us through because he wants us to believe that thing that God said is not going to come to pass. Physically, some of you are in this place where the enemy has challenged you physically and the word that's come to you that by his stripes... That by his stripes, we were healed. So God, what's wrong with me? Anybody ask that question, what's wrong with me? Anybody ask concerning your situation, what's wrong with me? Why am I not seeing such? And I just want to tell you, it's the enemy's job to make you believe that it's not going to happen. Your job is to believe what God said. Woo. Sometimes it's going to take a little bit more something. Sometimes it's going to take a little more. If we're, we're being challenged physically, can I tell you, if you're being challenged physically, it just doesn't come one way. The enemy has various different ways to come to challenge us physically. Can I tell you this? Some of you have been challenged in your relationship, but the enemy's called you to bear the scars 
in your physical sense, if you want to call it stress, it's stress on your body that's now revealing itself in different ways. Whew. Did you know cancer, one of the leading causes of cancer is called stress? Stress is one of those the causes that creates, because they say cancer cells are in everybody. Everybody has the cancer cell inside of them. But stress, stress can only be brought about by the enemy. Those stresses on your relationships, those stresses in life will be brought to your attention somehow to put pressure in places that they shouldn't be. Come on. Come on. So relationships, financial situation, you know, your financial, your financial system will have you really in a place. Financially, your finances will have you in a place where you're doing stuff you never thought you would do. You're so stressed out because of your money situation. And we can't trust in God in those places. Or we get to the place we feel like God doesn't hear us. I'm going to hurry up. I'm going to hurry up. I'm going to hurry up. Here's what it is. Here's what it is. These different areas, you don't understand it, but it's the enemy attacking. Now, now, it, it, on one hand, it is, it's vague. All I see is the results or the residual of what the enemy's doing. Can I talk to anybody? Mm -hmm. But what you need to understand, what you need to understand, what you need to understand is the enemy that's at work that's causing these things to manifest. So I can't get back to this place. On one hand, it's vague because I don't understand what's really happening. It's vague because he doesn't want you to know. Enemy, you know, what the enemy going to come and tell you? I'm doing this to you. Right. If he told you I'm the one that's behind it, then what you going to do? This You're going to really seek after God. But what he wants you to do is be in the place to kind of like, how would he say it, like the wife of Job. You say, hey, just curse your God and die. Because she wants your, 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 your misery, your, your, your situation, I want it to come to an end. You can look at it all kinds of different ways. But here's what I want you to understand. We get to that place that the enemy's not trying to tell us or he's not telling us, you know, uh, look what I'm doing to you. He'll let you tell you, look at God not moving for you. Look at what God's not doing in your life. Look at your life. And you start comparing your life to somebody else's life. He has successfully... Cause you to come to a place where your trust in God. Jesus. Amen. Somebody say it's forfeited. Jesus. He may not have derailed it, meaning he may not have stopped it. He may have not. He may create a sense of a natural disaster in your life when you stop trusting God. Different things start to happen. Woo. Anyway, so we get these things. This makes sense, anybody? Make sense? Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Glory to God. Jesus. And I, I hate to say it like this, but that's his job. 24-7. 365 days. I don't know how many hours or seconds. That's not for me to count. That's his job. Newsflash. No holidays. <laughs> no vacation time. His job is to see to it that you're disturbed, that you're bothered, that you're discouraged, that you want to give up, that you want to walk away. Your job specifically has been, as David describes it, to delight yourself in the Lord. Somebody say, it. delight. Yourself, yourself in the Lord. In the Lord. Yeah, that's a good word, huh? Amen. Tell somebody, I like that. Yeah. Delight myself in the Lord. But then the latter part is, he says, he'll do what? The Bible says, if you, it says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you what? Come on, somebody, tell them, say, I like the part where I get it. Did I say it right? Yes. I like the part where I get. But I want to tell you about the part where you got to give to get. 
And one of the things that happens is everybody looks at this word and they say, God, something's wrong because the word that's there, I'm not getting it. And the reason why he's writing it is because these evil doers that are coming forth and all the things that the enemy is doing, he's trying to tell them to get them understanding. Listen, in spite of what the enemy's doing, in spite of how the enemy's coming at you, delight yourself in the Lord. I don't care what he throws at you, how he undercuts you, how he moves, how whatever he's doing, I want you to delight yourself in the Lord. Woo. Hard part. Hard part. Tell somebody to think about it. The instructions in this case are not vague. But we're not getting it. We're not doing it. You know, this, this word, delight, in the Hebrew, oh, glory to God. Now, anybody, any, anybody here, anybody here, uh, a Hebrew? Any Hebrews? No, no, no. okay. And then I'm just going to tell you how I obtained it. I got it from some other places. The other shaman. And, and the Hebrew word, uh, first of all, they, you, you know, I'm not good in English. So, Stephanie, I'm not good in English. I wasn't, I wasn't that great with English because I like to cut stuff up, adjectives and verbs. And I don't, I don't, you know, uh, just because it's a noun, I may not want to highlight it as such. So I'm not that great with everything. Y'all get my drift? I know how to say it. I can articulate, but if you ask me what part of the speech it was, I may not know that. And they start saying, well, what part of the speech was that? Was that the passport? I don't know. I just know what I say. Well, can you explain to me? I can tell you what I meant. I want you to understand in this context what happens. This 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 particular word, delight, is a verb that means it's has a sense of a command or instruction where a positive action is to take place. Does that make sense? So I know, I know, you know, uh, so, so it's that verb. In other words, it, when you say it, it's meant to, to mean something that's something I'm to do. So it, 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 what it means is to live or spend in enjoyment. In other words, to, to say it, in other way, to make it simple, when I say delight, I'm saying to enjoy. And, then, and if you follow along, the other thing is when we start looking at and our, our definitions from, from the sense of our English, you know, dictionary. We get words, you know, from, uh, how do you say, uh, from the, the Rosses. Somebody there, come on, what's up? So, so when you get, to, you know, you go and compare the words, different words. What you get is words that, you know, that have this kind of meaning. Uh, what it means is contentment and satisfaction. And there are synonyms for delight. So when I say enjoy, delight, satisfaction, contentment. And you know, the reason I bring it in is because it will take us even further. So when we get this to define the word delight, it means to take pleasure. In light of the theme of contentment, it's that place that we're talking about now I will find satisfaction in. So when I delight, I will find satisfaction in something. Contentment in something. It, but what it's compelling me to do is to enjoy. And so when we see this word delight in the Lord, we're supposed to find contentment or satisfaction in God. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because remember, remember, we tell somebody, I, I want to get. Come on, talk to me. Everybody want to get that part where you get. Come on. Come on, I ain't forgot it. Tell somebody I want that part where I get the desires. Come on, anybody? Yes. It's just deep, you know, I, I just got to go back. You, you know, we've been around a long time. Say that part where I get the desires of my heart. Let's focus on that, huh? Well, well it, it's, it's vague. What's vague, Mother, is because we're not getting certain that God says the instructions to obtain that 
is that we have to delight in Him. To delight ourselves, we fully don't understand it. Now, here's what messes us up. Because when you begin to look at the Scripture, what you have to do is you can't sometimes just look at one Scripture. But look at this. Remember in Matthew 6.33. In Matthew, you remember that? Matthew 6.33. What happens is um, God is telling them, you know, the focal had been on food, shelter, clothing. And what he said is seek first Mario, yes. the kingdom and his righteousness. And then what happens? All these things shall be added unto you. Come on, come on, wait, 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 wait. We don't like the part where we got to do something. We just like the part where we don't get something. Well, if you watch what's happening in the same context of delight, where it talks about delight, mm -hmm. it's the same context now that you have to take in. If I'm going to get all these things added, I got to do the first part. We even know. Yeah. Tell somebody the instructions are not vague. We just haven't done. True. Yeah. True. No compliance. Am I talking to anybody yet? Oh, true. So here's what's happening. I'm telling you, God's going to move you, bring you into a whole other place. But in order for you to get there, you got to do some things first. Come on. Go to Philippians chapter 4. I'm trying to hurry up. Philippians chapter 4. Glory. 11 through 13. I should have got some help, man. Huh. Anybody there yet? Okay. So read the Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Watch what, watch what it says. You're going to hear the same things over and over again. What he's saying to us is that in order for us to obtain, not that I speak in want or speak, speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatsoever state, remember this Paul, in whatsoever state I am, there will do what? Be content. Remember this contentment is this place where you're going to delight. Contentment, satisfaction really is delighting or finding enjoyment or to enjoy God. Watch what he does. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in, I am. Paul says, no matter what state I am, I find myself content. How do you find this contentment? Let's keep watching. How do we find this content? I know both how to be abased. He says, I know how it is to have lack or don't have anything. And I know how to abound, to have the sense of increase, to have it all. Everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer me. You hear what he's saying? Yes. He says, but then the, the final straw, he says, I can do what? All things. Through who? The only reason he found contentment, the only reason he can find a place, a place of satisfaction is that he finds his contentment, his satisfaction, what he enjoys is that God is the one, he says, strengthens. God is the one that strengthens. One word, another word of seeing that, that strengthens is that God is with me. Amen. Here, God is the one that's encouraging me. God is the one that is, how you say, giving me what I need. Yeah. Whew. Come on, help, some, help me, somebody. See, the enemy's trying, tell somebody, the enemy's trying to push you off course. And the whole time, God is saying, if you'll find contentment in me, Amen. no matter what he's doing, Amen. no matter what he's bringing, I'm going to be there to give you what you need to get through this place. Amen. I guess I'm talking to myself, huh? Oh, Woo. Can I talk to you, Sister Ann? Because nobody else wants to hear this. <laughs> See, the enemy does not want you in that place where you can be content in God. He doesn't want you to find satisfaction in believing God. He does not want you to place where you enjoy God. He does not want you to rest in God. Whew. Here's what Paul said. Paul's telling you, he said, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what experience, what, what was happening in my life, the only reason why I can find myself content is that I find the sense of I'm enjoying the presence of God. Whew. He's giving me what I need. Come on, y'all. Y'all looking sleepy, so I, I will going to need some more scriptures. Maybe I have to come back to Bible study. Glory to God. Go to 1 Timothy 6 6. 1 Timothy 6 6. It's not hurt. Gotta hurry. Gotta hurry. Trying to hurry y'all. Come on, y'all gonna make me jump and leave you out. Come on.
Come on, somebody. This will help, help for you. He said, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Listen, God, all God wants for you and me is to find ourselves back in the place where we're going to delight in Him, to enjoy Him. Let, 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 let me get, get, get going. i got to move quick because I can see y'all getting a little tired of me. It's like, how do I delight myself in God? How do I delight myself in God? Anybody ever asked yourself, well, how do I delight myself in God? You know, I told you it's about this place to enjoy Him. Uh, one of the things that's missed for us is we don't know how. Tell somebody, I don't know how to delight myself in God. The instructions are vague. If the instructions are vague, then I'm going to keep missing. I'm going to keep falling short. I want to tell you something. Anybody here ever had a relationship? Hmm. Well, let me, let me, I, I see a couple, I see about three couples in here. Glory to God. Don't wait, wait. You know, I, I met that couple outside this morning, and he was opening the door for his wife. I said, oh, she, she don't need that door. Let her open the door herself. And, and she responded by saying, you taught me this. You wouldn't let me open the door for myself. So, it, so I said, Dante, you go on. I'm leaving it alone. You can't deal with your woman. <laughs> We, I guess, done spoiled, huh, Dante? I look over here. I see a couple. I see here another couple. Now, I want to say something, guys. Now, one of the things about couples is that you didn't just get to be a couple. I only know one guy that told me, he said he seen his, seen his wife, and he told her, I'm going to marry you. And not a whole lot of us that could do that. I told him he's a gangster. He must be a thug to walk up to a woman and tell her, you're going to be my wife. Glory to God. There's a whole lot of women that's not going to go for that. That's been the last you've been talking to her. But listen, how many of you got to this place where you first saw him and said, oh, that's her? Or that's him? You had to do something, and one of the things you had to do is you had to get to know him. Right? Amen. Amen. Anybody here got it? Amen. Adam? You know, ladies, you had a Amen. boyfriend, a girlfriend. What? If you don't know boyfriend, boyfriend, got to make that plain. Glory to God. You got <laughs> Woo! Help me, Holy Ghost. Father, forgive me. <laughs> too much, too much. Isn't it? These instructions got to be, can't be vague. <laughs> Woo! Listen, listen. Watch this, watch this. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you get to this place, you meet somebody. If you want to develop a relationship, what are some things you do? Talk with them. Talk with them. Look at it. Get to know them. We want to find some things out about them, right? In other words, you want to spend time with them. Right. Right? right. You want to spend time with them. When you're spending time with them, you're trying to find out what they like. Right. Glory to God. You know, one of the saddest things... Imagine being married, you know, for years, and you don't like something, but every year that's what the person gives you. That means they haven't learned what you like and what you don't like. If you like certain things, does it make sense? If I'm in a relationship, we're supposed to be getting to know one another. One of the problems with us in the Lord, we can't find contentment in God, is because we don't want to spend time with Him. In order to get this place of enjoyment with God, we're going to have to spend some time. Amen. Amen. What am I doing? I'm not just spending time I'm trying to get to know Him. I'm trying to know what He wants. I'm trying to find out what He likes and what He doesn't like. Yeah. Come on. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. I can tell you from experience, in the beginning in Christianity, probably the most thing that you learn, you keep hearing what you can't do. In God. Right. Right. The body of Christ, they keep telling you what you're not supposed to do. Can I tell you, God wants you to get into a place, a relationship, where you and Him enjoy spending time together. Amen. 
And one of the things that happens, the more you spend time with somebody, you know, remember those relationship days? Yes. When you were spending time with them, yes. and you got to the place, you didn't want them to leave. Amen. Glory to God. I, I hate to see the people when they're on the phone with one another. You ever see people that... Didn't want to hang up. <laughs> Won't hang up. Yep. And glory to God, you ever seen how to keep smiling? Yep. They start talking about one another, or he's not there, or she's not there. But every every few seconds, they want to drop a dime. Every few seconds, you know, what, especially like they marry some, my husband, my wife. You know, they want to keep dropping something so you can know how special they are. Have we been dropping the specialties with others about the God that we owe? Mm -hmm. See, when you start to spend time with him, not only are you enjoying his time, but you want others to know how much you enjoy the time. All right, all right. We've lost the sense that God's looking for us to come in this place and as much as you and I Want to spend time with God? God wants to spend time with you. Amen. Amen. We talk about delighting ourselves. It's about spending time with Him. It's about getting to know Him. Come on. Amen. When was the last time you spent an hour with God? When was the last time you and the Father were just worshiping together? Amen. One of the things that I found out oftentimes is that people... When they don't know you, when they don't know you, they can misunderstand you. Right. They can misread you. Right. Whew. The more time you spend with people, the more sense of understanding them. And the more, you know, when you get closer, you get a different relationship. I was telling, I was telling my son the other day, I was telling him, you know, um, it's in the summertime. He and I usually spend a lot of time together. And in the course of spending time, one of the things that happens, he starts sharing intimate things with me, and I'm sharing intimate things with him. At the end of our times, by the time the summer has ended, I've come closer to him, and he's come closer to me. We have a bonding that goes forward. Have you ever had a bonding with God? God wants us to have a bonding with him that takes us deeper from day to day. See, the enemy's trying to get you to break that bond. So when we talk about delighting in God, it's like spending time with him, bonding with God, getting to know him. And what I love, what I can't be real with you, Christians, we think we know it all. I already know, I already know, I already know. What I found out is when we've really come to the place to know God, when we start to understand God. I don't know if we fully get there all, all together. But what happens is it starts to shape and change us in such a way that what happens is that we start to do things differently. You remember David? I'm just about finished, guys. You remember David in the context that David was in that place that Saul wanted to kill him? And Saul was hunting him, searching for him, trying to take his life. David had an opportunity to do just that with Saul. And he wouldn't. And he wouldn't. You ever wonder and understood what really happened when David talks about that you shouldn't touch? Touch not my anointed. You know what he was really saying? It wasn't that David was afraid of Saul. It wasn't that David it still didn't mean that David didn't want to kill Saul because he wanted to take his life. But what had really happened, because David kept spending time with God, he began to see what God really wanted. He saw the heart of God and the desire of God, and that God was the only one that was going to take Saul out. David had opportunity. But what he chose is that he saw the likes and dislikes of the God he served. What does that got to do with us? Now, come on, 
I had a whole lot that I was going to share, but I'm going to stop here. Is this, this helping anybody? Yes. I want to get you back to this point. I'm telling you beyond a shadow of a doubt, God is about to thrust us into a whole new place. Some of you, he's going to bring you into his presence. Tell somebody, I'm coming into the presence of the Lord. I'm coming into the presence of the Lord. Go spend some time with God. Some of us have not wanted to. Come on, we've been distracted. Yeah, come on, come on. Life just causes you to be distracted yes, sometimes. Yes. Sister Linda, sometimes life will cause you at the end of the day where you know that you need to pray, but you're too tired to pray. Come on, anybody right, have that? Right, right, right. Sometimes life will cause distractions where you feel like you can't. Sometimes just physically, mentally, come on, say, emotionally, I feel drained where I have nothing else to give. And spiritually, God is calling me. Anybody been there? Yes. yes. Ooh. yes. I know the Spirit of God is calling me. Sometimes, physically, what I want to do is just sit down. Come on, somebody. Anybody just want to sit down and watch, uh, what's that, Jeopardy? And, 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 and you know, what, what's that when they roll the letters? No. Come on, somebody. You just want to sit down and just watch one of those shows and kind of back just, just relax. Come on, anybody? Amen. Don't want to do anything. Sometimes we mumble our prayers to God while we're watching the Wheel of Fortune. Whew, that's a real jeopardy. Sometimes we just want to be in that place. We just want to rest because physically I feel like I can't go anymore. I want to tell you something right now. God's going to push you. Tell somebody going to thrust you. Because where you're getting ready to go, what he's getting ready to do with you, he's getting ready to take you to a whole other place. I'm getting ready to close. i gotta, I got to say this because I'm telling you, I told you I started out by telling you I'm excited. What are you excited about? When I have no reason to be excited. I have no reason on the surface to be excited. I have enough. Anybody got debt? Yes. I, I got some debt. I've got some situations. No, 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 no. I'm not, not in debt, but I have some things. I, I have I have what you call more, you know, my money is shorter. My money is shorter than the things I want to do. Is that a better way to say it? Sometimes, sometimes, let me tell you something. Sometimes I want to go to Red Lobster. Huh? Huh? But my money says Red Robin. <laughs> so, so, sometimes, sometimes I'm on Olive Garden. And the closest I can get to that kind of pasta, maybe just go to go, go to the store and get a little pasta. Come on, y'all. So, so it's, it's different. But here's the thing. God is thrusting me in a whole nother way. It's not that he wants me focused on the things because that's not it. Sometimes we're so focused on the thing that we can't see God. But God's trying to get me to be content in him to this place I'm getting ready to move you beyond everything you can imagine. So people are going to be looking in a short period of time and they'll be talking about, wait, how did you obtain or how did you do? That's not the thing you want to hear about. What you want to hear about is the joy and enjoyment that I'm having in God. I've seen something. Dante, he says, I want to push you. So I find myself sometimes just sitting. I said, go back and look at this. What I'm looking at may be material. But the material thing that God is showing me, he says, listen, you can't afford it. The enemy wants to tell me, the enemy that told me you can't afford it. You, you know, what you, the enemy says, what are you looking at it? God said, I want you to go look at it because this is where I'm taking you. It's kind of like God speaking and God saying to you, I'm getting ready to take you into the promised land. But when you look at the promised land and everything it holds, it says to you, I cannot enter in because I'm not ready. I don't have what it takes. The, 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 the giants in the land are too much for me. And what God is saying, I'm getting ready to thrust you into a whole other dimension. I'm getting ready to take you in a whole other realm. I don't know who this is for. But if you're in this house, I want you to stand up on your feet. If you want to find contentment, you're going to find it in Him. God's going to do something in you that cannot be. There's no way. Tell somebody, we've been looking for miracles. I've been looking for miracles, miraculous things to transpire. And I'm saying, God, okay. I don't want to get to the place that I see a miraculous thing if it's in the area of provision. And I see that. And that's all I see. I want to see God. Amen. Amen. I want to be focused on what God is doing 
over and beyond. Man, come on, somebody. You know, um, you remember the children of Israel when they walked, when the sea, Red Sea had been parted, and they walked across. For many, that right there should have been enough, but sometimes just looking at the miracle, you had a tendency to forget. But those that find contentment in God, they'll see the miracle, they'll enjoy the miracle, but at the same time, they recognize it's my God that wasn't the one that brought the miracle. It's my God who is able to sustain me with miracles. Amen. That's where I want to be. That I'm not so focused on a new toy. Come on, somebody. Amen. A new truck, a new Amen. car, a new house. Come on, somebody. Amen. A new toy is not what's going to move me. I may be thankful because my God has graced me with it, but my focal point must be my contentment in Him. My satisfaction must come from knowing God. My satisfaction must become from spending time in the Lord. Listen, the enemy's still going to try to distract you. Right. He's still going to try to disturb you. But knowing that my God is able, yes. come on somebody, yes. sickness may come, right. physical ailments as we call them may come. There may be some things that come that may try to stress my mind. But when I recognize that my God is able, my God is more than enough, if I can recognize that my God can take me through, I can come into that place that I can yes. stand knowing that my God will make a way out of no way. Yes. I want to be in that place that I'm so faithful that when we come, that when we need the miracle, we can speak it forth. What God is saying, we can so believe that it's so. Yes. Tell somebody, God is thrusting me. When it looks like nobody's with you, but God said there's going to be followers, you're still going to have to speak as though there were thousands, yet you only got one. When nobody walks with you, but you know that you know that you know, God said you're not walking alone. Come on, somebody. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I shall fit. Come on, somebody. I know. That the Lord is with me. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, it's the place that we got to be. God is thrusting us to walk in a new place, in a new dimension, in a new way. We have to know in spite of what the enemy's doing, yes. in spite of evil doers, that God's got it. Yes. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Tell somebody God's getting ready to do it for you. God's getting ready to do it for you. Come on, prophesy to somebody. God's doing it. God's doing it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. What you smiling about? Man, I'm going through what you smiling about. God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. The enemy thought he had us beat. He thought you was out for the camp. count. He thought you was down and out and through. But you got to tell them now, listen, I'm getting up. You ain't got to tell them that you're getting up off the count. Nobody has to tell them. They're going to stop the count. Every time you get up, Amen. every time you get up, someone said, hey, stay down. But when you get up, and listen, you shake your head and say, wait a minute, that blow didn't take me out. It didn't want enough to not. I ain't going back down. <laughs> this may be your time. God's getting ready to infuse you. To fill you. I know sometimes we keep saying I want to go back to the old place. You don't want to go back to what you were. I want to secede that place that I was in. I want to go further than where I've ever been. If God has used me, I want to be used greater than I was then. Come on somebody. In the midst of what they call Samson's failure. Samson rose up. And they said Samson killed more in the end than he had ever yes. killed before. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. He took out more of the Philistines than ever. Bishop, my thing is, is that we got to be in this place. God's getting ready to thrust us into a place where it looks like it's impossible. But God says, yet I'm still going to use you. The enemy has counted you out. Your adversaries have said there's no way. But God said, I'm not finished with you yet. I didn't mean to be this long with you. Jesus. But you need to hear it. You need to know. God's going to do what he said. I'm, I'm excited. I'm filled. I'm fueled. God's going to take you further than you 
ever been before. God's not finished. This is the beginning of something new. Come on, let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you, we praise you, we exalt you for what you're yet doing in and through us. I thank you for this new dimension, this new height, this new depth. I thank you, Lord, for the substance that you placed within us. I thank you, O oh God, that you're causing the word of revelation to come. The places where we ourselves have looked at the word and considered it vain. I thank you for specific instructions that we can walk into this new territory. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're showing us how to accomplish what you called us to do. I thank you right now that no matter what's standing in our way, that we're about to speak to the obstacles like Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves and told the elements to obey. I thank you, Lord, that it's done. Somebody say it's done. It's done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God.